shall now declare open the DLF Indian Premier League. truly a momentous day for India and for the great game of cricket. IPL has revolutionized the way cricket is viewed and there's one man who is synonymous with it and he is, yes you kept it right, Mr. Lalit Modi himself. Sorry, my guest this week, well, not quite Jerry Maguire but a man who will create many Jerry Maguire. All right, now with me is the one and only Mr. Lalit Modi. I'm lucky. The IPL Commissioner Lalit Modi and Shashi Tharoor, the Minister for State for External Affairs, are set for a face-off. The then emailed a 34-page charge sheet against Lalit Modi. So finally, Lalit Modi is out. He's out of the IPL, out of... Seven months later, Lalit wants to tell his side of the story arranging for Mihir Bose, former BBC sports editor and renowned business and sports commentator, to meet in London for a frank and open interview. What follows is the result of that interview. Lalit, isn't it strange you're in London? You face some very serious charges in India, allegations about your conduct as IPL commissioner. India has just celebrated Diwali. What are you doing here? Well, I'm in London. I'm hoping that the inquiries that are going on in India will come to an end. We are answering all the questions that are required to be answered. We are doing through teleconferencing and we are providing the documentation that is needed to be provided to the authorities and to the different agencies that are conducting the investigation. And my security agencies have advised me that it's not the appropriate time currently to go back till the security situation smoothens out. And the Indian police have continuously told me, yes, the threat perception continues to be there and as and when I feel comfortable with that factor, I would go back. But many people may find it strange that these threats in your life have emerged after you've been facing serious allegations. I, I think that's, again, um, something that is being portrayed by the media. The media themselves know for a fact that way back in 2009, when I moved the IPL to South Africa, the threats emerged. Uh, there was uh, leads picked up and intelligence picked up by the police. I was given extensive security whilst in South Africa on my return back to India, continuous security all the way through uh, the current IPL and the threat escalated prior to the IPL and my movements were pretty much restricted uh, from where I could go and not go. It wasn't something um, that has come afterwards. It's quite visible on camera. It's quite visible and everywhere I went that the amount of security that I had around me was um, inhibited my you know, movements in and around India. But Lalith, you cannot deny the fact that the main charges against you are that you set up the IPL in order to benefit yourself and your family when probably Indian cricket did not need IPL at all. Well, you know, you may say Indian cricket did not need IPL as far as, or I did X, Y, Z to, uh, to benefit X, Y, Z. You've got to keep in mind, at the time when I conceived the IPL, it was considered to be a pioneering project. It was a dream of mine. And it was something that I think the people of India needed and wanted. And as any pioneering initiative, a pioneer can go out there and, and get the goal. Or, or, or most people who are, think they're going to be pioneers actually end up on, the, on, on their backs with arrows on their backs. You say the pioneer takes the gold, but you took the gold and your son-in-law, your um, relatives took the gold because they were part of the bidding process. When I conceived the IPL at that point in time, um, you know, everybody thought it was a harebrained scheme, a scheme. None of the existing traditional financiers for the sport or the game actually wanted to be part of, of the scheme. I couldn't exactly go to a hedge fund or, or to, uh, you know, to anybody else and ask them to, uh, to finance uh, this. In fact, wherever we went, and if you look back in the archives and you look back in history, you would find that actually nobody wanted to touch this. Domestic cricket was something that nobody believed in. Uh, domestic cricket was something that nobody watched. The only way we could take this forward is to bring friends and family. And, and friends and family are people who either believed in you or didn't believe in you. And if they believed in you, they would go out and invest. I sold them a dream. I sold them my dream. 
And I said, I would make it happen. And if I did not make them hap happen, um, they would be actually out there gunning for me before you would be. And because it's happened today, and it has become so successful, people are now pointing back and saying, oh, you gave it to friends and family. Where were all these people when we were conceiving the league? Anybody that you talk to said this is not going to work. So at that point in time, it was an extremely difficult sale, a sell for me. So whoever I tried to sell it to and convince them to buy uh, or be part of the system uh, was a very difficult factor. But you were doing this on behalf of the Board of Control for Cricket in India. Should you not have kept them informed of conflicts of interest? Should you not have told them, listen, nobody else is bidding, therefore my relations are bidding? One you minute. surely failed your duty there. Of course not, because as far as I'm concerned, the bidding process was totally transparent. It was done through an international uh, t tender process. The people who bid were in the bidding room. They sat there. Everybody knew who they were. Uh, uh, they all signed on the dotted line. They took the tender. They, they took the documentation. So when somebody turns around and says that they didn't know about it, it's absolutely a false story. They knew about it from day one. Uh, everybody and everybody, and I mean everybody concerned, from the governing council to the BCCI members, were very much present in the room. And in fact, everybody was just happy at that point in time that we got eight bids. At the end of the day, I mean, and they were extremely happy that they got eight bids. So you did not subvert the bidding process, the auction process. Take the case of Rajasthan Royal. You signed an agreement with yeah. a company where Rajasthan Royal's name doesn't appear. The Jaipur uh, C Cricket Eleven again, uh, name I, appears. Again, I, I think again you're confusing the fact of a brand, Rajasthan Royal, with a with a company, Jaipur, or Emerging Media, whatever that may be. The process you got to understand is that. At the time of the bidding, we were moving so fast, no, nobody had companies set up. We allowed, through the tender, it's actually in the tender process, we allowed prospective bidders to bid, form new companies, new structures at that point in time, um, and gave them time or X number of months to set it up and, and get their organization structures in place. It was formally done. We had, we, we had the best practices. We hired the best people. You know, we, we cut no corners. We had people like IMG who weren't scrutinizing each and every document. In fact, they were the back-end legal people. In fact, I don't go around negotiating papers or, or documents or drawing up agreements. Those are the job of the lawyers. Those are the jo job of the operating team. Yes, I sign them because I'm the chairman when it comes to me for signature. And the process is, was put in place by us, and we had the best in the world devising it. We cut no corners, and we went out there to make sure that the work was done. But did you not try to rig the latest bidding process, the Kochi one, where you tried to stop them getting the franchise, promote some other people, and you rigged that process? For the first time, I found that an agreement had been submitted by a party where they had a 25% sweat equity clause in there. And that clause, irrespective of the capitalization, uh, was going to ask the other 75% shareholders to pay for losses over the next decade or decades. Now, for me, it was very important to point out to the BCCI that this agreement is not going to fly because the people who were buying into it had no understanding of what they were getting into. And when I sat with all of them, and it's my job as chairman and commissioner to sit with each one of the prospective uh, owners coming in and explain to them the business of the IPL, it may look sexy, it may look fun, it may look, you know, you want to be out there with an owner's badge and be sitting out there. At the end of the day, it's business. At the end of the day for them. And today you may support it for other various reasons, but sooner down the line, it's going to become business and your accountant's going to, going to tell you, guys, you're going to be bankrupt or you've got to pump in more money. But despite what you say about this, is it not the case that you brought these points up because you had two other fancied bidders, Videocon and Adani, that you wanted to win that bid? I, I can't force anybody to win or not to win at the end of the day. Because Bidding, you were rigging the process. How do you rig the process? It's an open bid. It's a tender process. You put the tender in, highest person wins. If that was the case, why did Adani not win? Why did Videocon not win? Sahara went and won at 370 million because it's an open process. Kochi went and won. If it was going to be a, a rigged process, they would have won. At the end of the day, the people who put the maximum amount of money and safeguard the IPL and the BCCI go out and win. What we can do is only lay down the guidelines going forward. And, and, and anyway, any guideline we do put down is approved and is made up 
by a whole lot of people. It's not done by me alone. If you were not a cowboy, you showed misjudgment in tweeting about it, leading to the resignation of an Indian minister and causing the Indian prime minister, while he was in the White House, grave embarrassment. Well, that wasn't intended. It, it happened. It wasn't intended to embarrass anybody. The, it was the intention out there to get the truth out there. It wasn't in, intended to what you call embarrass the minister or the government. I'm sorry that it happened. But at the end of the day, you've got to understand that the events leading to Kochi are still subjudice in this matter. And I, don't want, like, I wouldn't like to, at this point in time, actually get into the nitty gritties and the details of what actually happened. I'm sure one day the truth will be out when the court system's finished with it. You don't regret tweeting? No, not at all. You say the BCCI made money, but they also lost $80 million as a result of the television deal you allowed Sony and WGS Mauritius to make, um, which, which uh, was a very, very costly thing. Again, I think people don't, and it's good to throw numbers like $80 million into the air. First and foremost, let's just understand and be very clear in understanding this, that this is not how the business works. When we went out to market the rights of IPL, you'd be surprised sitting here today, there was one bidder. And that one bidder was World Sports Group. Sony actually bid and withdrew their bid prior to the bids even opening. ESPN bid, but they'd put zero number on the table, so their bid was disqualified. They said, we don't think this is going to work. We'll do a revenue share deal with you. The only company that actually put any money on the table above the minimum guaranteed amount was World Sports Group in the round one. And, that, and then they did a back-to-back -back licensing deal with Sony. Now, what's the job of, of a marketing company, which we all forget? A marketing company's job is to buy and sell rights. So if they bought a right, it's close to $2 billion, as an example. And they sold it for $2 billion to somebody, as an example. And they made $80 million over a 10-year period. What's wrong with that? I'm surprised they only made that kind of money. So I, first and foremost, somebody came out there, took a risk, believed in the product, and of course, if, if we had failed, the BCCI would be sitting out there and saying, oh, you know, we have locked in our money, and the World Sports Group would be going back crying and saying they've lost a lot of money. So when you say that the World Sports Group is going to make $80 million over a 10-year period, I'm so happy they're going to make $80 million over a 10-year period because they deserve it. They took, the right, they took the risk with us at the point in time when nobody's ready to take the risk. They bought the rights. And they've, then they've gone out and further sold it to a third party. The issue here is that the way you did the deal cost the BCCI possibly $80 million. I think you're putting the question wrong. The way I did the deals, I made the BCCI billions of dollars, not cost them $80 million. Let's talk about the amount of deals that I've done for the BCCI in 2005 since I've come in. Prior to me coming in, look at the results of the BCCI at that point in time, how much money they made. They probably the BCCI in a year would make $30, $40 million to what I changed the marketing structure, I changed the way we did business, where the BCCI today, if you look at it, has locked in contracts over six or seven billion dollars uh, uh, going forward. Now this was done because of my learnings that I had in my previous jobs, whether it was at Disney or with ESPN, and I looked at where the value lay. And I took the value that usually traditionally were kept by broadcasters or marketing companies, and I applied those principles and took them to a federation and made the federation earn all the money. And I did that on my own time, at my own cost. And we keep talking about $80 million I made the BCCI a loss. What about the billions of dollars that I have made the BCCI? Well, I find this hard to understand. If you made so much for the BCCI and brought them such material success, why have they turned against you? This seems incredible. I agree. It seems, uh, it seems incredible because I guess they didn't expect the IPL to succeed, number one. And as it has succeeded, I don't think, you know, th there's, there's a lot of jealousy all around. And, and, you know, it's more than meets the eye. It's not only about the IPL. It's about the running of the BCCI. There are, you know, vested groups out there trying to take control. And there's, you know, more to it. But I'd rather not get into that right now. Because but you do not admit any character faults that this may have contributed, that you could not work with your colleagues? I worked with my colleagues. I worked with a whole lot of my colleagues. Everyone that I worked with is very happy. And first and foremost, every supplier of mine, every team owner of mine, every, every advertiser of mine, all the fans, all the boards that I worked with, extremely happy with the way I worked. Yes, some disgruntled people were there on the board. Yes, but, you know, I can't make everybody happy. You know, at the end of the day, I have to go out and do what I have to do. I have to go out and, and deliver a, a product 
And, and by the way, you're in the media business. Has anybody ever done it anywhere else in the world ever? No. The question is no. Has anybody made a successful league out of nothing ever? No. The question is no. Has anybody ever gone out and built a business model where everybody benefits from it? The question is, and the answer is no. Nobody has. So once I have done it, it's hit the limelight. It's hit the front pages of every newspaper. Of course, I've got the limelight. I've been, I've been awarded many awards and, and I've been, I mean, talked about everywhere. It has upset some people. And, and, and at the end of the day, I'm not there to please everybody. I can't please everybody and, and that's not my job. My job out there was to deliver a world-class league that benefits everybody, that benefits the players, can build the infrastructure, can go out there and, you know, with our heads high up to show to the world that, yes, we, modern India, can do it. And at the end of the day, it was the people of India and, and the fans that, that helped me do it. You said you've increased India's brand image worldwide, increased its cricket image, improved its relationship with other boards, but you seriously damaged its relationship with the English cricket board, as a result of which you've considerably upset Giles Clark. You know, <clears throat> I would really like to talk a lot about that issue, but the matter is under due process, and unfortunately I can't talk about it. But one day, I, I guarantee you, Mayor, I'll sit with you here, and I'll t tell you all about it. But you don't seem to be accepting that at any point in this, you're facing some very, very grave charges that you made any mistakes. You've got to understand, I did things where, where nobody had done those kind of things. Of course, we may have made mistakes along the way. I'm not saying we made out a mistake. We had hired the best people. We hired the best companies. We had people like IMG who would not allow me to cut corners. When you do things as far as... Um, innovating a product or coming out of the pioneering product. If ever anybody could do it, then I wouldn't be needed. When you pioneer a product, you come out with an innovative product, of course, when you're thinking outside the box, you are going to upset the old establishment. You are going to change rules. If we did not change rules, we would not be where we are. Cricket on its own is one thing. What we did is add cricket with the entertainment, with the glamour, with, with the Bollywood, you know, there were a whole lot of um, different segments and thought processes that we put together and put out there, which has resulted in the IPL where it is today. And of course, it's upset some people, and of course, we may have made mistakes along the line, but I don't regret them, because if I hadn't made those mistakes, I wouldn't have corrected them and gone forward and made it better. That is why today we are the world's hottest league. You said you were an innovator with IPL, but in the process, did you not violate certain norms of Indian culture, the pom-pom girls, blonde pom-pom girls? If I, if I were in India, I would see that as a sla slap to the Indian womanhood. Again, you know, we did things that were out of the ordinary. We did things which embodied modern India. We brought in things that appealed to the youth. We are a country, but probably we are the, probably one of the only countries in the world which has the largest number of youth, um, uh, youth population. And, you know, we, we try to address what the aspiration of the young India was, modern India was, and, and that's what we brought in. And, and you know, it worked. People like it. People love it. Everything that we've done out there is somebody that, uh, somebody's enjoying it. It's the first time that you would actually, you talk about people. Actually, they talk about the IPL as a family product. They talk about IPL where the whole family, from the grandmother to the grandfather to the grandchildren to the wife to the, to the husband, are all actually looking forward to watching a program together. They're not all going off in different directions because there is something there that appeals to everybody in, in, the, pro in the product that we created. Again, as I said, it's a whole product. It's something that we conceived, taking different elements of trying to make sure that it appeals to the whole family. That is why it appeals to the advertisers. It appeals to families across the country. That's why I've become the talking point, and that's why we have been able to deliver against every parameter to everybody. But in bringing these blonde girls in, were you not saying that Indian women are not beautiful? Of course not. We have one of the most prettiest women in our country, and, 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 and they are part of the IPL, and you know, we have um, many, many uh, in, uh, Indian women participating either as fans or in, 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 in the stadiums or watching the product, and the objective was you know, uh, cricket was a male-dominated sport uh, and had been. 97% of all cricket matches uh, were watched by males. And we have taken that product and basically taken that ratio up to having 
40 or 50 percent of the people that watch the IPL are non-traditional cricket viewers and are women and children. And what has that got to say about the product? It's got to say that they love it. They love every element of it, otherwise they wouldn't be watching it. They would have thrown away. And people have you know, very, very short attention spans. They have so much entertainment being delivered to them via 200 odd channels coming into our country. There's all sorts of entertainment coming in uh, into our country through the television tube. Keep in mind we're a single television household still. Majority of the homes in India are single television homes. And, and people tend to what you call watch one or two of the programs. And in our case, the one program that everybody looks forward to watching and has delivered consistently the highest rating is the IPL. I mean, that's all I got to say about it. Let us for the moment accept that you upset members of the cricket board, which has resulted in these actions against you. But given the fact that you're saying you are an innovator, you made a product to represent the new shiny India, why is the government against you? They are trying to take away your passport. Well, you know, why the government is getting into what they're getting into is something that you've got to ask the government and not me. Um, what I did is absolutely by the book of what I and the rules that we made, and we went out and delivered what we had to do. Currently, whatever is on is like a witch hunt, and you know, I'd rather not comment on it. This is something that you've got to ask the government why they're doing it. The enforcement directorate says you're not answering their questions, which is why they want you to come back to India. Why don't you do that? It's absolutely, again, I said again, coming back to the issue about the enforcement director. We have provided every piece of document that is needed by the enforcement director. All I've said is because of security issues, I do not want to take the risk. For me, security is a very important issue. The security of me and my family is extremely important. But Chennai police have been told of a serious allegation of falsifying of books. Again, the Chennai police, uh, what, I, what you're reading in the papers, I'm reading the same thing as what you're reading. I've been told by, in the papers that they find there's nothing substantial in there. This is what the BCCI secretary, Mr. N. Srinivasan, has gone and filed charges against me in Chennai. Why in Chennai? Our headquarters in Bombay? We don't know. This is something again you've got to ask him. And, and we, we are very happy to cooperate I'm sure the Chennai police are doing a great job and will do a great job in coming to the bottom of this. This Chennai allegation, is it based on Mr. Srinivasan filing a first information report? Yes, it's based on a first information report filed by Mr. Ch Mr. Srinivasan, which is the same allegation that he has filed in the show cause notice, which is the same allegation that everybody else is ne negotiating. He's just taken it to another body to investigate further. So all bodies are all investigating the same matter in the, at the end of the day. So how long do you intend staying in London? When do you intend to return to India? I will return to India as and when I feel secure. But do you not realize that by not going back to India, you further the image that you have actually benefited personally from the IPL? Can you tell me that you have not pocketed money from the, as a result of setting up the IPL? I can very clearly tell you that I have not pocketed any money from the IPL. And first and foremost, let me just be very clear and, and, be, and, and be very objective about this. When I set up the IPL, you got to, if you're talking numbers, let's talk numbers. You've got to keep in mind, I created something out of nothing. The BCCI has benefited, uh, will benefit in the next 10 years in excess of $2 billion, which is never something that they even projected to project, uh, that they were going to get. This is something of an initiative that I took on my own as an honorary member to create something of value, create something of value and do it for an organization solely for the benefit of the organization and for the people that are getting involved with it. It is something that I, it wasn't asked of me to do. It wasn't something that was, the, it was an agenda of the BCCI to do. It was a project that I conceived. I, I had been working for years to, uh, to see a, it was a dream of mine, something that I wanted to do. And I did it for the BCCI and for the country. And I didn't do it for myself. And the benefit 100% accrued to the BCCI and to the members who have been part of the IPL. And I'm very proud of it that I've been able to create something that is of tremendous value, has world recognition, and has put India on the map. You say you're not only a member of the BCCI, but you stayed at the Four Seasons Hotel, traveled in luxury, was provided transport and so on. That must have been paid by BCCI, of and that is a benefit accruing to you. Absolutely not. Again, that is a misconception and a, um, and a mis misnomer. All the costs from the day one that I've joined the BCCI, in fact, there are staff that are on my roles that I pay for it through, through myself. And, and all costs um, the, uh, related to my staying in a hotel or traveling or, or cars are all mine. You know, BCC, I may have provided a car here or there in, in a particular city, but they all charge it back to me. I never take, I, I fly on my own accord. I, I stay in hotels on my own cost. 
I, I run the IPL on my own time. I have people working in the IPL um, that are my personal staff, which I pay for, and, and that is my contribution. In fact, I'm paying for it, not somebody else uh, other way around. This, again, is a misconception. Uh, since I was born, I was born in a very wealthy family, without doubt. My grandfather and my father have worked very hard to build their businesses, and I've worked very hard to build businesses myself. But IPL has made money for your relations, and you oh. did not disclose that to the BCCI. Today it's very well and fine to sit back in hindsight and say, you know, I didn't declare. I didn't need to declare, number one, first and foremost, because it was all there, number one, in front of everybody. In fact, you had my vice chairman, Niranjan Shah, who was questioned immediately after the auction and said that Mr. Modi's relatives have bid. He said, so what? There are no other bidders out there, and if he has bid, he's put his own money. And if it wasn't friends and family that are coming to, out to bid and, and, come in and believe into a product, we wouldn't have had the IPL in the first place. There have been suggestions that the IPL led to the res resurgence and the resurfacing of spot fixing and match fixing in cricket. A lot is said about spot fixing and match fixing in any credible sport or sport that has taken place anywhere in the world in any, at any point in time. Our job has been always to be very vigilant in that. We were very conscious of that and our job has to be to the best of our abilities to make sure that this kind of things do not happen with any sport. You've got eight team owners out there, eight team owners who want to win, who have the passion, want, who are passionate about their teams. The players are passionate about the game, who all want to win. Um, they're not, it's not controlled by one entity. They're all separate and all of them are trying their level best to make sure they win. That itself, you know, lends, uh, tends to keep out those kind of elements in happening. You've great, claimed great credit for moving IPL from India to South Africa when the security situation would not have allowed the tournament to be held in India. But there have also been allegations that as a result of that you personally benefited from it. How? I would like to know. Uh, yes, I benefited by, yes, by creating a world-class product. I benefited, the only way I benefited is by showing to the world that it could be done. I benefited by showing my skills that I could move a product in 21 days move tens of thousands of people across continents for a product that people take years to build. Yes, I benefited in that, that regard. I, yes, I benefited by proving everybody wrong that it would not work. I yes, I benefited by the fact that I was able to go out there and implement a successful tournament with household and win the hearts and minds of people in South Africa, which is a challenge, and to do it in 21 days um, without hiccups uh, and, 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 and move a tournament which in the first place should have taken place in India and yes I benefited by fact that I made it an international tournament and made it a worldwide product. Here again we come up with a contradiction Lalit. You're saying you promoted India in South Africa yeah. through cricket right? right? And yet you clearly upset the Indian Home Minister Mr. Chidambaram and you made political enemies did you not? See again it was unfortunate that um, we could not hold the tournament in India. It's unfortunate uh, like you portrayed that we upset uh, certain politicians. But you've got to understand the reality of the matter was Indian elections are inevitable. They take 45 days to 60 days. Um, we could not have been provided the security. In hindsight, it's always nice to say that I have upset somebody. But if you sat in hindsight and the tournament did not happen, you would have said the IPL is dead and gone because the advertisers would have lo lost faith in it, the consumers would have, fan base would have lost faith in it, the owners would have lost a lot of money in it, and we would have not been where we are today. And we would not be sitting here talking about something that is so successful because we won't have had it as a product. So the choice was either not to do it and do away with it, or the choice was to take a hard, hard choice. The way you presented it, the government of India should be giving you a Bharat Ratna. Instead, they have taken over your Havelis in Jaipur. How can you explain that? All these all questions are related to due process and you know, when somebody does something um, which is under due process, I would rather not comment on it and wait till the outcome of that process is over uh, than give the actual story. Isn't it a fact? In the last few years, we've had many sporting innovations. I'm thinking of the English Premier League, the Champions League and so on. It's only the IPL that has been attended by this sort of controversy which suggests that you have behaved like a 19th century American buccaneer and cut corners 
and taken liberties with people, and that is why you are in this present position. I don't think so. What you're saying is right. Um, I don't believe a word that you actually say is right. Um, it's nice to put it like that and make it it's, it's a great headline. Uh, I'm used to that in, in one manner. But on the other hand, you've got to understand everything I did, I did it to the best of my ability, and I did it with the best intentions and with the best team that we had. We thought outside the box, we created a product. The English Premier League wasn't created overnight. It took decades and decades. The English Premier League already had a culture. People already followed the Manchester United and the, and the Chelsea's or the, uh, or the Arsenal's or the Liverpool's. And it was the English Premier League came to be formed for television purposes, for broadening or enhancing the value of, of, of their commercial rights and putting it together in a systematic manner. We looked at the downside and the upside of every league, whether it's the NFL, whether it's the MLB, whether it's the J-League in Japan, or the English Premier League. Each one has its upside, each one has its downside. They have different systems in it. Um, how many teams in the English Premier League make money? You're sitting here, not many. They're all in debt. We are a debt-free model. Which league in the world is there that ensures equal performances by teams. That is what I wanted. Why did I want equal performance by team? Because as far as television is concerned, that's your bread and butter whether we like it or not. Television pays for sports. Television builds leagues. Television builds sports. Without the television revenue, you can't go forward with anything. And we came up with a unique concept to build that. We came up with an auction process where all players were put into an auction. We gave everybody a limited amount of money and all players could be only bought through that process. All teams could only spend equal amount of money. And that was what it was all about, to try and bring equality in the teams because we wanted equal ratings. We didn't want peaks and values, uh, valleys in our ratings. For a broadcaster, nothing could be better. What has that done? It built huge loyalty base for these teams, which is quite unique from any other league in the world. You would never see a team that has been pitched at number eight out of eight teams in year one, move to number one in year two, and the number eight team in year two move to number two, one in year three. It's never happened in any sport. So I'm extremely happy and proud of what I delivered. I, am not, I have no regrets at all. Lalit, you presented yourself as an innovator, a revolutionary, making changes. But as a result of these charges, tell me, do you sleep well at night? I sleep extremely well because, again, they're not charges, they're allegations. And how do you see this ending? It's going to end by me getting a clean slate. But that could take a long process. It's fine. I'm in no hurry. At the end of the day, my res the results of what I have built are already proven. That's something nobody can take away. Even if they want to take away, nobody can take that away. I have created a successful product. I hope that product continues to be successful going forward because that's something that I built. It's a baby of mine and I'm very happy with it. But hasn't this damaged India, that the IPL was launched very successfully and then all these um, allegations have come up, then we've had I'm the Commonwealth Games, also again, I mean, you know, again, at the end know, of the day it worked, but there were lots of uh, again, allegations. I am, I, that's one thing that makes me unhappy, is that we have people out there trying to pull down a successful product. Uh, a lot has gone into it, a lot of people, it's built a lot of aspirations, the players, fans, Ownership has built a whole new business model, it's created a whole new industry out there, and we have done something that is good. There are lots of people that are trying to pull it down. And that's the sad part, and that's what makes me unhappy, uh, is that people always want to try and pull it down. Of course, there are vested interests that want to pull it down for other reasons, but in my view, they should get their act together, get together, and go on with it. Whether I'm there or not is immaterial. Uh, it's immaterial is the fact that we have created the hottest league in the world. Material of the fact is we have the best players in the world. We have the, one of the best owners in the world. We have put together systems and, 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 and modalities to be a successful league. We have people climbing out of um, and wanting to be part of it. We have, and all of a sudden, I don't see why an organization that I was part of, the BCCI, would go out of its way to kill a golden goose. You would never want to change something that is successful, you may tinker with it. You may tweak it to see, to make it, you know, more better um, um, and how it can be better. But you don't go out and tinker with a good product. I mean, if you have a good formula, I mean, I've been a marketing person all my life. Um, I've worked in many industries. You know, if I have a 
product that works, I'm not going to go out and tinker with it. Are you saying that this is the old story of the Indian exporting lobsters to America and he does it in an open box? When the American says, why do you do it in an open box? Aren't you worried they'll escape? He says, if one lobster tries to escape, the others will pull it down. down. Is this the old story? Is that what you're saying? Well, that yeah. others were jealous of your success? Again, you know, I don't have to say it. You're saying it. Thank you very much. Throughout this interview, what has struck me, Lalit, that you say these are allegations, not charges. Nothing has been proven. Quite right. You still haven't gone to court or anything like that. But you don't seem to admit that you might have made some mistakes. Mistake or what I think may be a mistake, or what you may think is a mistake, or a third party may think is a mistake, is again, it's in the mind of that person uh, and, and that person. For me, what is most important is that I delivered a product that made everybody happy. Let's, let's recount. As I said, objective, the BCCI met all its objective. So whatever, we surpassed everything as far as the BCCI is concerned. As far as the fans are concerned, we created a more bigger fan base than anybody could ever imagine. And, and they love it. Of course, you can tweak it and say, you know, X, Y, that should not be there or should be there. The players, nobody paid the players before. Today, the players have a livelihood. The players enjoy the game. It's most competitive cricket. And, and they are there to benefit. Sponsors, they're able to measure product and all of a sudden, they have a great new vehicle that they can promote themselves in. Our broadcaster are doing extremely well with what they are, and they're calling it the icon product, and done extremely well with what it is. Infrastructure that we needed to build is growing. We have been able to put modern new infrastructure in. The Indian economy has had a great fillip for this. I think this lays the path uh, for future great events to come. India is not just a small country where no big major events have taken place. This is an event taking place year after year after year, and we have shown that and, and, and can do it. Yes, you pointed out yourself, Commonwealth Games came. I think Commonwealth Games was a great, uh, great thing for India to happen. I think the government had the vision to go out and bid for it. Of course, sitting back in hindsight, you could have said it could have been done earlier, the stadium should have finished earlier, but this puts us on the threshold of a new sporting culture that is bound to come into India. This allows us to think more bravely, more think with, with uh, you know, think that we as a nation could one day host the Olympics. I think in my lifetime we would definitely look at a hosting the Olympics. And, and, and it gives us the platform to show that we are a professional country, the business of sports has come in. And, you know, uh, and, uh, and, and in, our, in our case, you know, we got lucky. No, as, as Napoleon would say, you'd rather have a lucky general than a brave one. And of course, we got lucky with us as far as we are concerned, but we made it work. Mistakes are made, but you learn from them and you carry on from them. In my case, um, as a pioneer and, and uh, as an architect or a founder of the IPL, I started with nothing. I started without any knowledge base. It wasn't done before. We built on it. But I am proud of what I did. I have no regrets. And I, I'd be, if I had to do it again, of course, I may do it with a little bit change with the, with the knowledge that I have. But if I didn't have the knowledge I had in the first place, I wouldn't have been able to create what I did in the first place. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.